Hi, I'm Marlo from Wild Food UK. Uh, I'm out foraging again and today I'm in the beautiful Herefordshire countryside. <coughs> in amongst some lovely old beach on this mossy bank here. There's oak dotted around everywhere. Herefordshire is uh, famous for its beef, but I like it for its green spaces and its mushrooms. And down here, we've found a lovely looking mushroom. If you come and get a bit closer, what you'll see to most foragers, even from the cap already, looks like one of the wider Belitali family. I don't know if you can see it, but the uh, skin on the cap is just starting to crack ever so slightly. It's not a red cracking belief though, this is something different. You can tell that if you get a look at the stem. The stem is a big stout stem. Unusually, this one is actually tapering towards the top. Normally this stem would be stout and, and sort of equal uh, diameter all the way down or fatter at the bottom because I believe that this is an absolutely lovely edible mushroom called the uh, Belitus appendiculatus. Um, I believe mycologists have now call that the, the uh, Butra Belitus appendiculatus because the Belitali family is being split up into uh, many different subsections now that mycologists have started to unravel more details about the mushrooms. But from a forager's point of view, all you need to know to ID one of the wider Belitali family is look under the cap. Now we've got some wood light here. Just get those out of the way. And you can see under the cap here, we've got sponge or pores instead of gills or spikes or anything else. And that sponge quite simply tells you that you've got a member of the wider Belitali family. And as a forager, that's good because this is a, a wonderful family full of great edibles, including the porcini mushroom and the bay Belitus and a few others, the aureus, that all, to me, are just as good as the porcini. And this is one of those. Now, its common name is the butter belit. And you can uh, see here it's got yellow pores, very yellow pores. That's the reason for the name the Butter Belit. And also, I don't know if the camera can quite pick it up. What I'm going to do is just cut off a section of the cap here. Probably be better if I used the knife attachment on my knife. Um, but hopefully, if I can hold it still, you'll see a tiny amount of reticulation or sort of webbing effect where uh, at the top of the stem, the stem meets the cap. Now, that's one of the key features, along with the fat stem and the yellow pores and this brown cap, which is very fleshy, but cracks a little bit. That's uh, how I know this is the butter belief. But from a forager's point of view, you really wouldn't need to know that. All you'd need to know is that there is no red on this Belitali mushroom. And if I cut it in half, there'll be a mild amount of blue staining. The pores on older specimens will stain if you damage them. On this young one, I'll show you here, on this young one, they're just staining ever so slightly green, greeny blue. I'm slightly colorblind, so whatever color you want to call it. But you'll see the flesh here, when cut in half, although very maggoty, isn't really staining blue. It will flush a little bit blue, um, if I leave it for a while. And also this mushroom's flesh, when you cook it, it can go blue for a small period of the cooking time. Um, but then it will go back to yellow and mushroomy color and very lovely mushroomy flavor. It's a great one for soups. It's got a nice earthy flavor, um, a real winner for the pot. Unfortunately, this one, apart from some parts of the cap, which I will take home and dry, is just a little bit too maggot infested for me to go back and fry up to put on some toast. Um, we share these things with nature. Now, one last thing about this mushroom, it's in the Belitus family or the spongy undercap family. And uh, with that family, when we can, we give a little bit back while harvesting. And by uh, taking off these pores, which on bigger specimens come off quite easily. You can see that bit's come off quite easily. And throwing them in the dirt. I mean, I know this mushroom grows predominantly with oak trees. It will grow with other broadleaf trees, but there's an oak tree just over there. So all I'm gonna do is simply throw 
these bits of yellow pores over there. They're not great to cook with, they're certainly not the best bit of the mushroom, but more importantly, if there are any viable spores, any babies that might grow from this mushroom, they're in there, and if I put them in the right environment, there's a very small chance that one of them might take. Now, cut all of the pores off of that one, and I'll do the other half, and probably by the looks of it, leave the stem here, but I've got a tasty little bit of dried mushroom to make stock with. The butter belit, Belitus appendiculatus, or Butra belitus appendiculatus, a really lovely find considering it's July. This isn't a mushroom you normally find in July, and it's been quite dry over the last few weeks, but that's the, the joy of foraging. You always get nice surprises. If you want to find out more, go to uh, www.wildfooduk.com.